Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come by and tune in to the Osiris Inc. Podcast Episode 1. Today, we're going to talk about something that I think is applicable in all phases and all aspects of life. The importance of having a voice. Stay tuned. I'll be right with you. Music licensing reimagined. What's going on, everyone? What's going on? And welcome to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to sit down and say, you know what? I feel like listening to this podcast. Let's give this person a shot. Cool. Well, that's awesome. So let me introduce myself before we get started. Uh, My name is Osiris. I am a multi-time award-winning author. Um, I am also an independent book publisher. I also do a bit of editing. I'm a ghostwriter also. Um, I'll talk a little bit about those credits. But what's most important to me is my personal life. I'm a married man. Been married going on seven years to my beautiful queen, Melissa. I love you very much, my queen. Have three awesome, wonderful children. Crazy also, but <laughs> wonderful nonetheless. My oldest baby boy, he's eight years old. Um, and then my two younger children, twin boys. Twins are a whole different topic, a whole different ball game. I'm not even going to cover that. But, yep, uh, twin boys just turned two on the 19th um, of August. So there's my introduction. Here's a fun fact. I'm actively serving in the military. Not a shameless plug or anything. I think that's important to point out as I juggle the lifestyle between being a husband, being a father, being an active duty member of the military, Air Force to be specific, and also being an author. So you can imagine the insanity (laughs) that comes with trying to juggle everything. But nonetheless, I wanted to add a voice to the world of book publishing and the medium for authors, creating a platform that will include other authors that will be on the show down the road, and as well as writers um, I understand, too, that down in Hollywood, the writer's strike is continuing to go full force. We're needed. Let's be honest. Writers have been in existence for eons, as far back as we can go. But we're important, if not one of the most important pieces of storytelling. Um, I know it's a collaborative effort. It does start first, though, with that pen to paper We are the creative minds behind the worlds that many people see in television, see in film, see on stage. If you are in a theater or Broadway, heck, you even see it in commercials. It's in books. It's in our it's in our education system. It's embedded in our history. Writers are important. The pen is mightier than the sword. It's a real thing. Um, But I also wanted to add some flavor to it. If you know what I'm talking about Um, in this industry. There is a noticeable lack thereof of diversity when it comes to this type of platform. Now, there's diversity. Don't get me wrong, but there can be a lot more of it. Um, I remember doing this book festival event in Berkeley, California um, earlier in May. I think it was May 7th. And I was there and I met some wonderful people while I was there. But there was an incident where it was this um, older African-American male. He was in his 70s. He came up to me, just walked right up to my to my table. And he just stood up and he just stared at me. It was a little awkward, but he was staring at me and he said, hey, sir, what's your name? And I said, good morning, sir. My name is Osiris. It's a pleasure to meet you. Put my hand out to shake his hand. And he said, you're the first black man I've ever seen as an author in my life. And that just resonated with me. Now, I'm all about diversity. Heck, I, I grew up around the military and moving around the moving around the country and then various parts of the world overseas. Um, I've been grateful and fortunate enough to have met many people and have formed friendships throughout my life of many ethnicities, many different cultures, ranging from Caucasian, Asian, black, uh, Latina, Latinos, you know, just a wide range of people. So I'm colorblind when it comes to people, but I'm also not oblivious 
to the position that I am in and the lack thereof of that type of representation in that position. That's what's important to me. And that's what I want to add more to because I believe that representation is imperative to people wanting to be consumed maybe with the product or just feeling like, hey, I see them. They look like me. I can do it, too. And I would also like to note that I am in an interracial marriage. My wife, she's Mexican-American. I'm black American or African American, however it's phrased. Um, I'm black. She's brown. Our children are a mixture of both. And our friends, our really good friends next door to us, they're white Americans and Mexican Americans. Some of our closest friends are of just of, of different ethnicities. And being in this position, uh, one can't fear pointing out that aspect. So with that, I do want to note that I know I mentioned earlier that I'm an author, but I didn't specify what I do with my writing. I do poetry, and I also do children's books. And I love, love, love doing both. I also have experience with writing graphic novels. Um, I have a graphic novel that's currently in the, what do you call it? In, in film, we call it post-production. Um, the story is already written. It's just being illustrated right now. And that's taking some time. But there's going to be tons of content that I'm going to give and produce for the the, um, the listeners, those who decide to stick by my stick by my side during this journey. And you know I'm just going to c- keep it honest and just have a good time. I think life is just way too short. Far too many people take things so literal, and it's I mean don't please don't get me wrong. It is important to be realistic at times, and there's also times to just not care and loosen up and have a good time, if you know what I'm saying. Far too many people just take things way too literal and can just add negativity to the public or to wherever you are, whether it's your home or maybe it's your inner circle, maybe it's your work center. But why this topic today? the importance of having a voice. The importance of having a voice for me as an author is knowing that my voice, the stories that I tell, comes from my upbringings and my imagination and being able to feel comfortable with going out to different communities and showing them, hey, it's possible. I went to this school, and I don't know the name of this school, but it was one of the... um, it, it was a minority-based school. Heck, I went to the school, and on the campus of this school, it was a middle school, on the campus of this school were were cops everywhere. I had never seen that before. Uh, again, I grew up in the military. Oh, I'm a military brat. For those who don't understand what military brat means, it's just you grew up as a child under military households, and I don't know, you, you lived from military base to military base growing up young and your parents or your parent was a member of the military. And so that's what I mean by military brat for those who aren't aware. Uh, That's not a derogatory statement. But so I've never seen that before. I've been to many schools and that was the first time I've seen that. And it was important for me to go there and talk to the talk to the students and let them know, hey, this is where I stand. I'm here. I'm 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 a member of the military. I got myself into that branch of service, the Air Force. Um, I'm also somebody who created my own platform with writing and being an author and then trying to push boundaries and change the norm with what I write and what I talk about. My poetry really focuses heavily on mental health and the illnesses behind people. Also, another thing I forgot to mention is that I work in a mental health facility in the Air Force. I've been doing that close to 10 years and have met a variety of people with significant issues. And that's not that's not wrong to say it's it's it's, it's fair and true to point that out. And there's a taboo behind it. You know, there is a literal taboo with saying I need help, not hey, let me help you out or hey, uh, you should go to the doctor for that. 
you have a broken bone in your leg or you a fractured rib or your 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 middle finger is bent backwards because you jammed it playing basketball or something to those extremities, you know, you would tell them to go get help. But to tell somebody, man, you're man or girl or hey, you should probably go get some help for that. It's just really taboo. And I've also had my issues, you know, I've had I've struggled with all kinds of of issues mentally. I'm doing fine. I'm loving life. I'm enjoying it. I mean, sure, there are things that, you know, can continuously improve and stepping into the unknown, such as this podcast that I'm doing, stepping into the unknown can be a bit can be a bit scary. But you just gotta do it. You gotta get out of your comfort zone. The longer you remain in your comfort zone, the easier it is to stagnate. And the progression of your life will not happen. So I always encourage people to find what they love to do and create opportunities, not just for yourself, but for people around you. Are you adding or are you subtracting to what you're doing? To me, I feel that I am adding a great deal of positivity to the world of storytelling. I have a lot to say. But I also want to heal and add that to the world as well. So that's what my poetry focuses on is, uh, aside from the mental health things, I also put a heavy emphasis on motivation, inspiration, self-affirmations. I try to find a balance between the two. It's not all about being sad and gloomy or angry or, you know, that's important to talk about. But you also, in retrospect, want to be able to point out positive information in a world full of negativity is really easy to latch on to those types of things. It's hard to find something to be happy about if you are conducive to negativity. You know, for me, I'm in a happy space. My family, we're in a happy space. Again, we all have our days and that's realistic or sorry, that's reality. Um, but the reality is, is that you will remain in that position until you get yourself out. So that's what I talk about with my poetry. My children's books are much different and more fun and more vibrant. And this is awesome just to be able to tap into that part of my emotion and create these worlds, colorful, vibrant worlds and work with so many talented, incredible illustrators who we collaborate with. Um, I mean, who it's a collaborative effort when it comes to those and um, my wonderful editor, uh, her name is Kristen. <clears throat> she has been just a blessing. Um, she is also the wife of my mentor, Brian, who has just been so sensational just throughout my time in the military. And I, I really am forever indebted to him and his wife. Those two are just incredible people. And then there's my wonderful, wonderful parents, uh, my parents and my siblings, my my brother, man. And my sister, just a wonderful childhood I had growing up with them. This just been so glorious seeing them being able to grow, being grown, being a grown man, a grown woman, and just creating opportunities for themselves. And so, and my parents, they just set an amazing example and provided me with a blueprint on how to be an amazing parent. I really just hope and pray that I'm doing as great of a job as they did for me. And I guess we'll see. You know, my children, they're happy. My wife, she's happy. And my wife also has her struggles that she's going through as well. So one of these days, I'd love to have her on the show for her to just talk and connect with other people. Uh, my poetry book, uh, Dear Sick Mental Virus, Chapter 1, Her Story, focuses on her. And I got her permission to be able to do things like that. So I'll have to share some um, poetry with you on one of these shows one day. I look forward to that. Anyway, um, you all sit back, take some time to enjoy this. I'm going to go ahead and play a little quick ad while I'm on the topic of my wife. I hope you all enjoy it. Stay tuned. Is it cold outside? Are you freezing? Maybe it's hot and humid out today. Boy, a nice, cool, refreshing drink would be lovely right now, wouldn't you say? I'm glad you agree. So, you must be thinking... Where is he going with this? Absolutely nowhere. That's what I would have said. 
if I didn't happen to know someone that could make you want to drink in style. Look no further than my wife's small owned business, Infinity Pabs, where she customizes cups, tumblers, and coffee mugs, all at a reasonable price. For more information, please visit and follow her on Instagram at infinity underscore paths, spelled I-N-F-I-N-I-T-Y underscore P-A-T-H-S. Thank you for supporting her small business, and thank you for trusting Osiris Inc. Podcast to broadcast and promote her arts and craft services. Nice little shameless plug. I got to do it. I got to do it. And un- un- unapologetically do things, you know. I got to support my wife and her business, too, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with book publishing. It's important to just show that respect and show that love and help her out the best I can. So you're going to hear a lot more of those type of ads um, (laughs) on the show. So back to the topic at hand, the importance of having a voice. You have to learn how to speak up, learn how to feel comfortable with your voice, your tone of voice. Feel comfortable with being able to tell people when they're wrong factually, not when you think that they're wrong and you can't prove it, but factually wrong. And then help them out. I, it really does. It, it kills me, man, where I see people that say, hey, you're wrong. You're wrong, especially in the military. I mean, this is probably the case in civilian worlds, too. But like I said, the military where it's built on um, it's, it's built on discipline. But there are many leaders who just say you are wrong and we will not help you or and that's terrible. And that's not many leaders who I've encountered, but there are some who do that. And that's in general. But in general. It's important for you to just say. You know what, sir or ma'am, I respect what you're saying, but this is why I feel like I'm right. And some people are just scared to do that. And so like on my medium with my with my stories, I talk about those things right? like what I feel is right and appropriate to talk about. Heck, I've even spoken on issues with black on black violence in my poetry. Like my biggest question when it comes to that. Right. I remember the movement, the Black Lives Matter movement. And we might have some people who's like, "Uh uh-oh, what is he going to say about this? Don't worry. This is not going to be derogatory. I'm just going to speak on on some facts of what the Black Lives Matter movement. My biggest gripe with everything um, was how can we as black men and black women want help, which we definitely deserve help. I mean, everyone deserves help. but, But my race in particular, oh, yeah, things can be much better across the country for us right now there is an um there has been a a significant improvement with some color with some little sprinkle of pepper there but within the black community there's this issue that i've seen where it's black on black violence and how can we in the community of black america scream for help when we're hurting ourselves you know Uh, we can't do that and so I, i want to be able to add to the culture and create things of, 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 of positivity, creating wealth for our communities, and not just black, but the minorities as well. And for those who decide, I, I rock with this dude. I, I can rock with this guy. This, this Osiris dude, I, I, can, I dig it. I can follow him. But really think about it. How can we in the community really expect help when we are destroying ourselves? This is nothing new. It had, does date all the way back to centuries of just inflicting violence on ourselves. And it's not all of us, but it's a good deal of us where it's still an issue. And so I encourage everyone in the black community and my community for us to continue to remain united. Um, united we stand, divided we fall. Remember that? Yeah, that's a phrase I heard when I was a kid. And we have to, and we can't give anybody a reason to doubt us, you know. Um, so uh, with that, I will switch gears here and really continue to focus on the importance of having a voice. I just want those who are who are afraid of speaking up to really ask yourself why you are afraid and what can you do to improve your confidence. My confidence comes from 
having knowledge, not just of what I do, but what I love to do. The more knowledge you have, the more you can feed yourself, the more confident you will become, and the stronger you will be. And that will also add to the physicality behind the person. You might even decide, you know, I feel like lifting weights today. I feel like going on a treadmill. I feel like going outside on a bike. I feel like going for a hike. There's strength in numbers. And that's not just for the literal sense of, hey, this one of me, let's get 30, 40, 50 other people and let's come together. That's strong too. But if you all come together, do you all have the same goal? You can get 50 to 100 people together, but if you're not all on the same page, you might as well do it by yourself. Things will fall apart. You have to be united. You have to be strong. And with yourself, you can have strength in numbers with just with, with, with one thing. You can have knowledge. In this industry, the book industry, you can have knowledge in mental health. It has nothing to do with books, but you can write books about it. Um, you can have knowledge in weightlifting and exercise, being a bodybuilder or a powerlifter. You can have knowledge when it comes to school and education and different subject matters. You get what I'm saying? Now, if you apply that same type of knowledge, that same type of devotion to learning that skill, and you find other people who have the similar mindset that you have and you all are in alignment with one another, I can assure you, you will become an immovable object and your power to be able to bring concerns up a ladder or up a chain will be heard if you all are, are, are united. And that's also with the medium that you feel comfortable with. Now, again, it does come back to me, you know, wanting to speak heavily about my art form, me as a, as a writer, but more specifically as an author feeling comfortable with knowing that if I'm going to do a children's book, the character on the book cover is going to look like me. You know, um, but also I grew up in a diverse culture. So you're going to see all types of flavors in my stuff. And my and, and not just with people, I'm creating different types of things. I'm not going to talk about it right now. I want to kind of keep that uh, laid a mystery when it comes to my children's books. I want to be able to just surprise people. But if you decide to go on my website, www.osirisinc, spell O-C-Y-R-U-S-I-N-K.com, you will be able to find what you are looking for. You will be able to look deep into me as an author. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, I will send you an email personally and I will keep you updated weekly to bi-weekly. And that, I can assure you, is a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward, and I hope you do it. Anyway, <laughs> another shameless plug. <laughs> Sorry. I, <laughs> I, I couldn't resist. I, I, had to, I had to do it. I was thinking about it. When will be the perfect time for me to just insert that website? Uh, maybe in retrospect, it probably would have been better to do it at the beginning. Uh, that's why we keep doing these things, right? Yeah, <laughs> trial and error. You live and you learn. But nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. I hope that for people who decide to stick around with my podcast, um, you can learn some things from me. And when I have other guests on here, you can learn from them. And I'm creating just a platform like I did with my independent book publishing company, Osiris Inc. Publishing. Just trying to create a platform, not just for me, but for other authors um, and other other illustrators people who want to just expand on their own brand or expand on their own expertise or knowledge or experience. I'm creating that, creating these things, creating opportunities for people, not just for myself, but for, for, but for the world. We need more of that. We need more material out there that can help people. And we need more creators. Yeah, sure, there's people who's doing podcasts. There's hundreds and thousands of people doing podcasts. And there's hundreds of thousands of people who are writers and hundreds of thousands of people that are influencers and doctors and nurses and judges and cops. You get what I'm saying? But everyone's different. They're not you and they're not me. I have my own voice. And sure, I might talk about the same topics that other people discuss, but it's from my perspective. I can bet money that... I think differently than everybody else and vice versa. If everyone is going to walk into a straight line, I'm probably going to be the one that stops and looks left and right. 
and say, okay, if we're in a if we're all in a in a hallway, and the only path is to go up or go down, there's walls around us, right? Well, we can't all keep walking down this hallway. There's got to be another way. Let's start punching the let's start punching or kicking or getting some sort of an object and start cracking the wall down. Maybe there's another way out. That's my thought process. You gotta um, s- s- you gotta stray away from what the norm is and create your own opportunity. And with that, I will end this by saying thank you all so much, so much for taking the time out of your day to tune into my first show, my first episode of Osiris Inc. podcast. I hope you learned something. I hope you stick by my side. I hope to continue to grow this and just continue to spread the word. Be happy. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next time.